Hey everyone, thanks for joining. If you're here, it's because there is someone in your life that you might like to give some perfume to for Mother's Day, which is in a week, the day that I'm filming this. I'm filming this the Sunday before Mother's Day and hoping that this gives you some ideas for fragrances that are highly likable. In other words, you're gonna put this fragrance in that person's hand and there's a high probability that they've either heard of it or will like it or will be impressed by the presentation. These are also very affordable options. One of the rules for me was that everything in this video had to be available online under $100. And so that might not be at the retail site for the manufacturer that makes the fragrance. You may need to go to a discount retailer like FragranceNet or Fragrance Buy, Fragrance X, Perfumes Online, I think it's called perfumes.com. Look around. Maybe Maybe even Amazon if you have an Amazon account and can hit that prime button and get it in just a couple of days so let's jump in I've got 12 options of fragrances that I think are meet those characteristics they're universally likable they're under a hundred dollars um, and they will present relatively well to whomever you decide to gift them to so if you know someone who would probably like some lighter fresher more green kinds of fragrances so they're not into like heavy florals or don't seem like the type of person that would like that i have three options for you one that i uh, recently hauled and you'll see it in an upcoming haul video it is this beautiful donna uh, rosa verde by Va valentino it's considered a floral green fragrance this is very light very fresh it has notes of bergamot pettigrain ginger you get, of course, rose in the middle, rosa verde, magnolia, and osmanthus. Osmanthus is a note that smells like apricots. And then you get in the base, mate, which is a tea note, T-E-A-T, -E ambret, and some wood. But mostly, this is a very fresh uh, rose fragrance with some greenness to it. And I think the bottle presents just marvelously. This is something that if I opened the box and saw, I would think, isn't that pretty? Thank you so much. Fresh and green and rosy, and you can't go wrong with this. Next is one that um, maybe is not for a younger mom, or maybe, I don't know. Uh, it's one that it's pure white linen. And the reason that I say that about the age thing is because Estee Lauder makes this and White Linen, the predecessor to this, uh, came out in the 80s. And so this is a flanker of that and people see White Linen and Estee Lauder and they tend to associate that with people who are maybe uh, in their 40s, 50s and older. Regardless, if you have someone in your life that might appreciate something like this, regardless of their age, I do think it has universal appeal. This is a floral aldehydic fragrance. Aldehydes tend to smell very soapy to people. So just keep that in mind. You get some green notes at the top, grapefruit, apple, freesia, pear, Italian mandarin, and raspberry, but it mostly smells very clean and soapy at the top. You get tulip, honeysuckle, jasmine, gardenia, tuberose, and rose in the middle. So it gets more floral as the top notes dissipate off. And in the base, you get cedar, heliotrope, and patchouli. So it's a little earthy in the base. This is a light and lovely inoffensive fragrance. Very clean, fresh laundry on that side of things. Slightly, slightly citrus, but mostly a clean, slow, soapy uh, fragrance that is very easy to like pure white linen if you've ever smelled the original white linen and wanted something like it but easier to love pure white linen is the one and then another one that I absolutely love and I think is a wonderful gift it's a little bit of a stronger clean fragrance it's not the easy ones like the two that I just mentioned so this one is the lightest and the easiest and then you go to pure white linen that's a little bit sort of more potent and then Aqua de Joya by Giorgio Armani. First of all, the bottle I love. I think it's just a, a really, it presents very well, this bottle. This is a floral aquatic, and you get lemon and mint at the top. To me, it's 
it's mostly a lemon at the top like a citrus a strong citrus in the middle you get florals jasmine peony and then you get some pink pepper to give it a little hint of spiciness in the middle in the base you get virginia cedar labdanum and brown sugar but this is a very strong potent powerful fragrance a few sprays will do you well and i consider it more of a citrus aquatic uh, in that it's fresh and it's bright and it's in your face for a lot of the day So if you like someone that likes to be clean and fresh, but maybe with the volume turned up Aqua de Joya is a great option for that mother And then I'm moving into what I call some more watery lighter florals my words not any perfumers word and Let's go with the lightest of these which is uh, McQueen Eau Blanche McQueen Eau Blanche. It's classified as a floral woody musk, but really this is just a very light, pleasant, inoffensive tuberose. The bottle design is just gorgeous with the studded top. It is hefty uh, and it's this beautiful rounded bottle and the juice in it is slightly tinted in color. It's a really beautiful bottle, very elegant and light and simple. This has a top note of violet leaf, and then in the middle you get tuberose, jasmine sandbok, alang alang, and in the base, woody notes and white musk. Yeah, it is. this is just so lovely for the person that might appreciate a floral fragrance but wants to keep it light, easygoing, elegant, inoffensive. You know, they're wearing perfume and they smell good, but they're not taking over the room. It is, this is one of, this is a favorite, uh, Eau Blanche by McQueen. It's hard to go wrong with this. I can't imagine anyone who would not like this fragrance. Next is one that uh, for the bottle alone, you may want to purchase. What a lovely fragrance. It's considered an amber floral, but I just think of it as a beautiful light floral. It is Catra in Rose uh, by Beaucheron. This is, like I said, an amber floral. You get at the top black currant, artemisia, bergamot, mandarin orange. Uh, so let's check out how this opens. Let me remind myself about this. And I love this. First of all, let's before I talk about the notes, look at this very, very impressive, gorgeous bottle. It is frosted with this little indent and um, whatever you call this pattern here. And then this beautiful gold detail cap at the top that twists down for you to ex, uh, expose the atomizer yes the top is it's nice it's fruity it's citrusy a little tiny bit sharp but then it settles down into this gorgeous rose peach blossom and jasmine in the middle which is just really really pretty you get base notes of vanilla musk patchouli and vetiver but it's mostly a really nice rose a clean fresh rose not the strongest it's not going to project super far but it's stronger uh in potency if you will than the mcqueen so i'm not talking about performance these are all nice performers i'm talking about projecting off of you and leaving like a scent trail in the room for others to enjoy this is the lightest then comes the katra in rose this bottle alone oh. <laughs> And then my last suggestion from here is one that is uh, going to be a scent of the day when this video airs, which is C. Fiore, another Giorgio Armani fragrance. This bottle is this milky pink color that is just so feminine and girly and pretty. This is considered a Shipra floral, which I, I don't know if I agree or disagree with that. It's just a nice, to me, it's a powdery, soft, pretty floral is what I can tell you. Top notes, black currant and green mandarin. So it's fruity. Uh, I don't get any citrus at the top. It's mostly like fruity and powdery right when you spray it. The opening is gorgeous on this. You spray it and you are transported onto a cloud of soft floral girliness absolutely beautiful but not girly in an immature way this is a mature 
well, it's not mature as in mature fragrance. It's a grown up, beautiful floral is what I mean. The middle is neroli, rose, patchouli, and oak moss. You get a lot of the rose in the middle. I don't think you get a lot of patchouli or neroli, to be honest with you. And in the base, it's vanilla and white musk. So you get that musk, by the way, all the way throughout, that little powderiness to it. Just an absolutely divine fragrance. Um, that opening doesn't last forever, but it lasts a long, and take two, it lasts long enough for you to really just enjoy it and fall in love with this. One of the prettiest fragrances in my collection, C. Fiore, hard to go wrong with that. Again, can't imagine anyone who would not appreciate this gift or use it. Then I have a category of what I call your classic, you know, florals, classic florals that are maybe a bit heavier and hard to go wrong with. These are for the ladies in your life who want something a little bit more refined, maybe you're a bit pickier um, and you want to make sure you get them something that they would think is a classy gift. All of these are classy. But you know what I'm saying, you got those folks in your life that just won't be impressed unless there's a certain name on it or it comes from, you know, anyway, a certain category. These are all from the same house. Forgive me, but they are the ones that I thought of first for this category. And I know that they're available and I know you can get them in the sizes I'm going to show you and in bigger sizes on discount sites for less. So don't go to the house of chanel don't go shop on that site for these fragrances shop elsewhere and get yourself a bargain version of these so i'm going to start with the uber classic hard to go wrong with chanel number no. five now for the kinds of women that i just described more than likely they're going to appreciate having this in their collection even if they're not totally in love with the fragrance i mean how can you be a perfume lover and not have tried this or had it in your collection at some point? Not everyone loves this. This can be a very hard to love fragrance, but if you're of a certain age group and you grew up with this being the iconic fragrance that everyone loves, you know the ladies I'm talking about. Now we're, now we're talking about people probably in their older 40s or older, um, upper 40s or older is what I meant to say might have a strong appreciation for this and want it in their collection and be happy that you gave it to them, especially if they don't have it. This is very much an aldehyde fragrance, a floral aldehyde. So remember the soapiness that I talked about with pure white linen, you're gonna get some of that in here too. It's top notes of those soapy aldehydes, alang alang, neroli, bergamot, and peach. Um, and then in the middle, iris, jasmine, rose, lily of the valley. In the base, you get sandalwood, vanilla, oak moss, vetiver, and patchouli. Ignore those notes because they tell you nothing about what this smells like. You get a mostly floral, a heavier floral with some soap surrounding it. And I'm talking about some really nice hotel soap, you guys. <laughs> I like it. Um, it's no longer... It's a love for me in that I appreciate what it is in history, and it's a like for me in terms of how it smells. As you can see from this big dent that I've made in this, it's one that I wore pretty much every day for a long time, especially to work. Um, and at that point, loved it. I've worn it so much that I can't say I love it anymore. I still really like it, and I still am glad that it's in my collection. Uh, and just know who you're buying this for. If they're younger or they like really softer, uh, more fruity fragrances, skip this. This is for that woman that wants that refined, elegant bottle and will appreciate that it says Chanel number no. five on it. <laughs> Same for these next two fragrances, to be honest with you. Um, this next one is Coco Eau de Parfum Chanel. Another one that I'm not even going to read you the notes like with Chanel number no. five because the notes tell you nothing about what this smells like. What I can tell you is that this is a deep, sultry, this is a grown, mature fragrance, mature, mature. It is one that does well for ladies that like to go to elegant events. They're always dressed up. They have the finest jewelry on. They wear their clothing 
always ironed you know what I'm talking about shirts always starched and pressed they got their pearls on and they're going to the fancy events they're uh, gonna make sure they go to five-star restaurants etc etc <laughs> that is the person that would love Coco Chanel I love Coco Chanel sometimes I'm that woman usually I'm just your like leggings and silver jewelry kind of girl so it, it spans the range but if we wanted to put a stereotype to this it's that other woman that I described Coco Chanel really mature strong beautiful grown-up fragrance potent you mean to wear this you have to mean to wear this um gorgeous do you guys remember getting those hugs from your older aunties and they smelled good but it was overpowering they might have had on something like coco chanel classic beautiful fragrance in that same family but younger so if you've got a younger woman who fits that profile that i just talked about and we're just doing the profiles for fun you know none of these for anybody can wear any of these fragrances no matter what their age or what their personality or whatever so just have a little fun with it but it's another chanel so if you have the mother mom grandma and i don't mean grandma as in grandma scent i'm talking about in terms of maturity this is the daughter gabrielle chanel and i think it's literally the daughter of coco chanel if i'm not mistaken gabrielle um this is a lovely 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 fragrance i have just a little bottle but you can get like this size or the full you know 100 ml bottle um and again check on discount sites for this a floral woody musk but to me it's a bright citrus floral i just create my own classifications you get in the top citruses peach red fruits like multiple red fruits black currant pettigrain in the middle white flowers you get your tuberose alang alang jasmine orange blossom some coconut and in the base musk vanilla and sandalwood the only issue i have with this fragrance is it does not last long however it is just beautiful it's a it's just it's a gorgeous fragrance. I have a hard time with it because it doesn't, it goes away so quickly. But it's one that I think many younger women who would consider themselves elegant and refined would probably enjoy having in their collection. Gabrielle Chanel, really pretty, bright, bright citrus floral. Ah, and then we're on the last category. And these are what I call your powerhouse sultry sensual fragrances dare i say even sexy okay so we're talking about your va va voom kind of lady who loves to wear her high heels she's got her little black dress on she gets her makeup done she's wearing the red lipstick out and she's got her big hair <laughs> maybe her hair is in a high ponytail i don't know but she wants other people to think that she is sexy and alluring and maybe she is okay or maybe she just has that je ne sais quoi that confidence that you know says i'm here i know who i am um take me as i am i don't know i'm making some stuff up you guys <laughs> so i'm going to talk about one that i purchased very recently and i adore it i love it you're going to hear about it in an upcoming haul video it is Olympia Aqua. In fact, I talked about it this week because I used this to cover up another fragrance I wore this week that just kind of wasn't working out for me on that day. Y'all, oh my gosh, this fragrance took my breath away when I smelled it. It is so elegant, so beautiful, so deep, so sultry, so captivating. And I mean, took my breath away where I was like, oh, where has this been all my life? If you have smelled um, La Vie Belle Le Clot, right? The flank or Le Clot, it is like that on steroids. Sometimes I joke around and say, if I could be a fragrance, I would be this one. Today, it's this one. If I could be a fragrance today, I would choose Olympia Aqua to be. This is uh, classified as a floral aquatic. It has top notes of water notes, bergamot, orange, pedigree, and grapefruit. Ignore that. What you get at the top is a, a small miracle. <laughs> it is sultry. It is round. It is creamy. 
it's just it's a dream in a bottle in the middle ginger ginger flower jasmine orange blossom peach and rose again it's just, I don't even know how to describe this fragrance. And in the base, salt, vanilla, ambergris, cashmere wood, sandalwood, benzoin. So it's round and it's rich and it's supported by all of these wonderful, deep, comforting base notes. This is everything in a bottle. This is womanly. This is a hug. This is sexiness. This is come hither. This is a uh, wife me, put a ring on it, fragrance. Olympia Aqua. It's for that woman, the one, you know? And then let's have two more here. Another one that's a very, I think, a sexy fragrance, but in a refined and mature way. Another newer one to my collection that will also be in an upcoming haul is this gorgeous Narciso Rouge. First of all, look at this bottle. This thing is a work of art in and of itself. It's got the Narciso Rodriguez, uh, em, not emblem, but um, engraved or whatever you call that, embossed in there. And this bottle, oh my gosh. This is a very powdery, floral, mature, sexy. This is the lady with the Christian Louboutins on, okay? She's strolling in the room. She's tall. She's confident. She's got her stilettos on and she doesn't need to look around because she knows everybody's looking at her. Okay. <laughs> it's classified as a floral woody musk. Top notes, iris, rose. Yeah. Let me sniff here. Oh. This is a cleaner fragrance, if you will, than this one, which comes across a lot more deep, powdery, uh, sweet and salty at the same time. This is a little bit, it has a slight bit more freshness to it, if that makes sense, but it's still beautiful and deep. Okay, in the middle, you get uh, musk, tuberose, and orange blossom, which is just an amazing combination here and really, to me, defines what this fragrance is, a musky, mature floral, a va-va-voom, you know you want me, kind of floral. <laughs> in the base, you get tonka bean, which is gourmandish. Oh, beautiful scent, beautiful note. Uh, vanilla, white cedar extract, cedar, sandalwood, and vetiver. This is a very rich, opulent fragrance. Oh, I would wear this. I would wear this on date night, all day, every day. I would wear um, Olympia aqua and i would absolutely wear this next one this to me is like an ultimate mother's day gift for affordable so i said under 100 remember not to go to the retail site and you'll see what i'm saying is true go to your discount site so you can find these fragrances at more affordable prices this is an a love for me a high love eve saint laurent libra intense or entance. It's an amber fougere. Now, I don't love fougere fragrances, which are like your bar barber shop kinds of scents. It smells like shave cream to me. This is not to me a fougere. This is something else. This is like a floral oriental, absolute gorgeous fragrance. Now, I didn't love the original YSL Libre, Lib Libre, however you say it. I returned it. There was something about it that I just didn't get along with. But this, this, y'all, this is a masterpiece of a fragrance here. You get lavender, mandarin orange, and bergamot at the top. Like right when it opens, you're like, the clouds have parted and I am in heaven. Absolutely beautiful. The middle is lavender, Tunisian, orange blossom, jazz, ooh. Hold on, I need to sniff myself a little bit. Oh my God. <laughs> Back to the middle notes. Lavender, Tunisian orange blossom, jasmine sandbok, and orchid. Base, you get vanilla, tonka bean, ambergris, and vetiver. This actually has some similarity to Olympia Aqua. Maybe a little bit more citrusy, like a little bit more slight citrusy in there. 
you get the little lavender note but first of all the bottle is amaze balls oh my gosh and the juice is a beautiful color and it is just a very elegant presentation to that lady that you want to feel special this is beautiful if i could be a fragrance i might also be ysl libra intense those are my recommendations for mother's day uh, fragrances that either you should wear on mother's day that wasn't how this video started out or you should consider gifting to someone in your life if you need gift ideas under 100 universally lovable and likable chances are the person is going to at least want to wear it even if it's not a love i hope that this was helpful and if not hope that it was at least entertaining for you and i will see you all in the next video subscribe if you have not subscribed already and you enjoyed this content and if you're returning i appreciate you love you guys take care and happy mother's day